Well, Carl, before we turn to the Kavanaugh thing, you have a new book out, uh, and it, it's it's an interesting read. It's a it's, and I would say it's a difficult read from a point that you really, as I'm going through it, really need to slow down. How is it? Uh, what's the response been from people Thanks. reading your book so far? The response has been amazing. We're we're getting uh, uh, emails, phone calls to the uh, to all of our offices, uh, postings on the internet. Um, it's just released a few weeks back. It's already got eight reviews, all of them five stars. Stars, uh, and and it's not my brothers and sisters and mom and dad. Um, in fact, I, there's only one person that I know uh, know the person. All the others I don't. But it's uh, it, it, I, I think God is really using this. And 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 yeah, you're right. I don't want to parse your words. You said it's a difficult read. I I, I want your um, audience to, to to know that I and I know that you mean this, um, that um, I wrote it in such a way that anybody that's a reader and, and, and knows anything about the Word of God can grasp it. Uh, the, the chapters are like five pages long each with subheadings in each one. I, I wrote it at, a, didn't write it at a doctoral level, but you're right in that it's a difficult read in that most Christians who read this will say, as they're reading, they will think, I've never seen this in the Word before, mm-hmm. but there it is. There it is, and there are the, there's the scholars he's quoting that have seen this for hundreds of years. And why haven't we heard this stuff preached and taught from the pulpit and in our Sunday school lessons and in our seminaries? It's right there in the Word of God. And I think that's the reaction that a lot of people are having. They're saying, oh my gosh, this kind of... This really puts a, a deeper level of understanding on, on my Bible reading. So that's, that's the kind of responses we're getting. Folks are really loving it. I think the Lord is really using it in all praise to Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Carl, obviously um, most of us are thrilled and glad that the Senate confirmation hearings for Supreme Court, they're, that they're done, and Judge Kavanaugh did get confirmed. But what an amazing and awful and just just dark and and grisly battle that was and the democrats showed their true colors i think and i want to get your speculation on first of all your insight on the process which i have an idea (laughs) only you can put that into words but your speculation on who is this going to drive to the polls in november when we vote next yeah, well, thanks. Uh, listen, I've written three or four articles. I've done probably 20 radio interviews across the nation on this, so we could talk for hours. So I, I will t- keep it narrowed down, and then and then as you guys have further questions that you'd like my opinions on, and they're not uh-huh. necessarily the opinions of Q90 or this station. <laughs> thanks for the disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, i got to give that disclaimer, <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, but, but the thing is, is I wrote articles uh, that we posted on our um, uh, network that went viral, and then interviews picked up all over the nation from those articles. I wrote them on the day of the hearings. I watched all the hearings and then immediately wrote some of my observations and predictions. As it turned out this time, this doesn't always happen. I'm not boasting. I, it's all the Lord, but but I was right about every prediction I made. I was right about every uh, position that I took after the hearings. And as it has all come out, uh, excuse me, as it has all come down, uh, because the bottom line is, let me answer your, your last question first very quickly. You mm-hmm. know, what, what will this do to voter turnout? I think it's going to charge and energize both parties. Mm-hmm. It's, it, we will not know how this is going to turn out until the last vote is cast and recorded, because, because the Democrats are going to say, if you'll put us in, we'll impeach this guy. And by the way, we can talk about the legalities of that in a few moments. Um, and, and that's going to charge up a lot of people who are just filled with, with um, hatred and vitriol and just, just uh, inconsistent to the facts. Uh, they don't care. They're, it's all about it's all about feelings, and so um, and that's how the left operates. It, it, it operates on feelings, and so it's going to charge that energy base, which sadly is quite large in our nation now. We've been dumbed down for a hundred years. We've been telling our generations of children that they came from monkeys and they're no more than just animals, and the whole world revolves around them. And so now everything in life is based on feelings. So it's going to really charge that base, but it's going to charge the Republican base too because. 
and, and I use the word Republican, let me say conservative, because there, there are Republicans who are godless, there are Republicans who are rhinos, there are Republicans who are deep state, there are Republicans who, in my opinion, have been compromised. Mm. So just because somebody has an R by their name nowadays doesn't really mean anything. Uh, but, but the bottom line is, for those of us that are conservative, and particularly for those of us that have spiritual discernment, here's what we just saw. We just saw how America will be when the leftists, if the leftists, are ever fully back in control again. And that is, what we say goes. If we accuse you of something, you are guilty. We don't have to prove anything. You have to prove your innocence, and we're going to scream and shout and cuss and fuss trying to influence anything you bring forward we're going to call you a liar regardless of what evidence you bring forward we're going to call you a liar regardless of what evidence we do not have and you will do as we say and we will use the media we will use our power to have the world we want and your place in it doesn't matter that's the message we got and i think it shook conservatives to the core of their being i know it did me because i thought okay this is demonic. I mean, we can see into the faces. We hear the shrieking. We, we, we see exactly what their plan is. And, 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 you, you know, and guys, let's face it. The Word of God tells us there will be a generation that will live under this kind of global influence one day, under that Antichrist spirit. It, it doesn't mean that every little pocket in the world will necessarily have to bow down to this spirit, but it does mean for those that are still here during those days, this is the spirit that will prevail, but it will be on steroids mm. from what we just saw, wow. and it will be global. So this, this needs to be a wake-up call for the church, guys. We've just had it displayed right before our eyes. Now, I'd be glad to pull it all apart legally and law enforcement and forensically in a few moments, but, but that's my quick overview. Yeah, it, it's, it's very true. It, it is a shot over the bow. It was Orwellian to watch what happened, and, and of everything, the, the chilling assertion that apparently more than half of Americans believed, basically that a man is guilty until he can prove his innocence, speaks to the core of yeah. the hatred of the Constitution. And yeah. quite frankly, the other thing that just jumped out at me, Carl, let's just even assume for a minute Judge Kavanaugh did this when he was 15 years of age. Yeah. Liberals will tell you how forgiving and tolerant they are, not when you stand against their agenda, will they? Well, well, no, they're, they're, they are the party of shameless hypocrisy. It was Hillary Clinton herself who told us that women were not to be believed. It was a bimbo eruption, remember? Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and, and even, you know, even after her husband admitted what he did in the Oval Office, it was still well. It was a right wing conspiracy. It was it was the woman's fault. It was these women. It was their fault. It wasn't my husband's fault. It wasn't our fault. I mean, I mean, the hypocrisy is shameless. It it we actually watch this Senate hearing devolve into. Well, tell us about your beer drinking. Beer drinking, really? Jeez. The the leftist senators are going to ask him about beer drinking. I mean, this thing. It just went to down the toilet into the utterly ridiculous. And again, it's a sign, it's a signal to us what is going to happen if God's people, if the Christian community fail to be the salt and the light. And that means not only in preaching and sharing the gospel, but it also means in being involved in our constitutional republic before we lose it. Because if we lose it, we will lose it to that, to what we just saw. And that's pretty frightening for our children and grandchildren, brothers. Well, Carl, do you think part of the problem, and I know the answer is yes, so I'd like to get you to speculate a little bit more on why the younger generation, they don't know the history of Bill Clinton, or they only know one side of it, what the media does or does yeah. not report. So your reference to what Hillary said, they don't know that. They don't know those yeah. quotes. They don't understand, or maybe they don't see the hypocrisy, or maybe it is that they don't want to see it. Yes. Well, no, Here, here's my speculation, and, <clears throat> and, and most of my speculation is just, provable fact so <laughs> but 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 still i will just i will couch it as my speculation <laughs> listen there's several things that have collided together several several veins of truth that have collided together first of all as i said early on in the show 
a, a little over a hundred years ago, it became kind of law of the land through <laughs> through court precedent, and then eventually just sucked up by the leftist and put into into our entire culture. And that is, we have raised up generations of children who have had it pounded into their head, pounded into their head from every avenue of our culture, that there is no God. The Bible is a fairy tale book. The concept of a creator and an intelligent, intelligent designer is for stupid people. That we evolved from animals. We are an accidental hodgepodge erupting from a chemical soup that accidentally exploded millions and billions of years ago. That's all we are. That's all there is to life. And life revolves around you. We have taught generations. Now, those little children are all grown up and running our country now. They are our judges, our lawyers, our police chiefs, our sheriffs, our, our, our um, not all of them, but I'm just saying across the nation. They are our Congress people. They are our, uh, you know, administrative people. They, they are our military leaders. I mean, I mean, this is, this is huge. And so it has devolved our, our national understanding of at least at least the understanding that, look, there is a creator. We are accountable to a higher power. Our laws and our government were set up to reflect that accountability. That's not to say that we're perfect. It's not to say we're trying to be a theocracy. It's just our Declaration of Independence and Constitution and our jurisprudence was set up to reflect the fact that we are all eventually accountable to a higher power. But all of that has been diluted and devolved, and so now... You know, the leftists understood. They were, they were brilliant in their attack. How do you bring down a powerful constitutional republic, superpower economy, superpower military, superpower with national pride? How do you bring that down? Well, it's a slow process, but you have to invade the minds of the children so that you can capture the future generations. You have to dumb them down. And I'm not saying our children are dumb, but you understand what I say when I say dumbing down. That is changing history, changing facts, changing the truth so that they don't know anymore. Then you have to begin to stack the courts. And you have to, now in the digital age, you begin, you begin compromising people. You spy on people. You use the latest technology to compromise judges, Supreme Court judges, congressmen. Um, now we know the three-letter agencies, FBI, CIA, all of the, the FISA warrants and the fake, you know, lying to FISA judges and, and fake investigations and fake dossiers and planting people inside the White House. I mean, this is just... It's surreal. It is Orwellian. But that's the answer, Dave. It's a conglomeration. It's a perfect storm. And so now we have a generation of kids that truly think it's okay to reach in a womb, pull out a baby, and throw it in a trash can. But don't you dare step on a turtle egg. Oh, no. That, we'll put you in prison over that. They actually think that. Uh-oh. They they trash and laugh the word of God. They trash and laugh at the existence of an intelligent designer, and so and so the the schools, the literature, the teaching, the history has been watered down and changed. The the courts and Congress and the government has been compromised, and now we have some leaders in office who are trying to affect a change. And look at this: the president of the United States and all of the power he has still daily comes up against the onslaught of the deep state and their lies. Mm. That's where we are. Indeed. Carl, let's, let's look at this from a spiritual perspective. Your next to last book, Gods of Ground Zero, was very powerful. You talked about uh, uh, Baal's Arch or the Palmyra Arch, and coincidence or not that as the Democrats reached a fever pitch of trying to destroy Kavanaugh only a mile or so away, The Palmyra Arch was being paraded on the National Mall. Coincidence here? Yeah. I I don't think so, based upon the research and the writing I've done in the past. And and I don't want to sound conspiratorial, but when you put it all together, and that book was called Gods and Thrones, and it was released last year. And then my newest book, Gods of Ground Zero, is kind of a sequel to it. I say kind of, because you don't have to have read Gods and Thrones to understand Gods of Ground Zero. But if you read them both, then you get this overwhelming overarching picture of what's really happening and how the Word of God lines up to it. And you're right, and in that book, Gods and Thrones, I have a chapter or two wherein I follow the Palmyra arch around the world, 
and point out the, the quote, coincidences, you know, question mark, end quote, of, of its location, its appearances, and the timing. And, and what we find out, and I won't bore your audience going through each one, but basically every single time this thing appeared, and I'll back up in a minute and tell your people what it is for those that just don't know yet, but every time it appeared, it appeared on the world scene in a huge place like London, New York, uh, Dubai, um, all of these places um, in, in, in Italy, and, and, and all of them occurred at the opening of huge globalist events and all, and one the one in london occurred not only at that but it occurred on the eve of beltane which is the worldwide global for the for the for the occultist it's it's the celebration of baal it's 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 you know it's their it's their holiday of worshiping baal they unveiled this memorial to baal and to the worship of baal and so, and, and then New York City, right near Ground Zero, and Dubai at the opening of the Global Summit Conference, and in Italy at the opening of the G7 Conference, and now on the Washington Mall during the Senate hearings at the time when this whole abortion agenda was the, the center focal piece, whether people were speaking it or not, and many of them were, but the leftists, I mean, they, they were making it clear, we can't have this guy on there. This could, this could ruin everything about abortion. We, we, we will lie. We will burn him down. We will ruin his children's lives, his wife's life. We will do whatever we have to do to protect this, this slaughter of the, un, the innocent unborn. And there erected the the this memorial to Baal. Now, very quickly for your audience, what we're talking about, Palmyra Arts, Palmyra, Syria, is where it was located, and it was the archway that was the opening, the door, the portal, if you will, that led down a trail that led to the ancient temple of Baal built by the Romans. Baal worship is one of the oldest pagan worships in the world. Jesus literally called Baal Beelzebub in the New Testament and said that that is Satan. Jesus said that. that. That's who Satan masquerades as Baal. And, and other gods, if you will, little G, uh, you know, um, Elohim, other Elohim, other gods. But Baal is the biggie. Baal, the Baal worship, the ancient Baal worship involved child sacrifice. Imagine that. The massive abuse of substances, drugs and alcohol to a, to a drunken frenzy. Imagine that. It involves sexual perversion to the highest degree. Some of it was so perverted, I'm not even going to speak of it over the radio in its, in its intricacies. I will just say sexual perversion, drug and alcohol abuse, and the sacrificing, killing, burning, and, and destroying of, of little infants. And the screams of the infants was what worked the, the drunken, fr- drug-crazed crowd into a frenzy as they gave thanks to Baal, uh, who literally was Satan, is Satan, and, and all for the promise of financial gain, wealth, riches, and fame. That's what the worship of Baal was about. And the Palmyra Arch was what was left of the destruction, the ISIS destruction of the Baal Temple, and they even destroyed the Palmyra Arch, so they reconstructed it and and began to take it around the world under the guise of a historical artifact as a sign of victory, is what they said. We're mm. going to show the world that we can have victory over the terrorist. The problem is that the whole worship of Baal was a sign of victory and freedom from Yahweh, that goes all the way back to the most ancient. That they were actually, whether they knew it or not, were using the motto of the most ancient motto of, of, and mantra of worshiping Baal. They were using it as they paraded this thing around the world. And everywhere it shows up, it shows up at the most godless times and the most unbelievable places that are attached to either globalism or these these godless atmospheres like this whole thing over the abortion agenda. So yes, it's I, I, it's if you didn't know all if that I just laid out, people would say, oh, that's just coincidence, or here yeah. that's a conspiracy. You guys are crazy. But when you trace this thing back over the last two or three or four years, that it's been making this little tour around the world, it's almost like Satan himself is being taken around the world, where he is declaring, "This is mine. This is mine." This is mine. This is me. And 
I see it in the spiritual realm. I don't know if others see it or not, and people are free to disagree, but I'm always right. Well, I tell you, I, I clearly see it, and, and I think anyone who doesn't is being blinded by the father of lies. Our guest on Stand Up For The Truth, pastor and best-selling author Carl Gallup's When We Come Back. The danger of presumed guilt that was thrown on Kavanaugh is it headed your way as a Bible-believing Christian? As we look at the Kavanaugh hearings, we would be making a huge mistake to think that this was all about the Supreme Court. What we witnessed was a man who, by all evidence, led a moral life, faithful to his wife, uh, did everything right, all the qualities you would want in a Supreme Court justice. But they, his opponents went out of their way to lie about him and then make him prove that they weren't lying. Carl, this is more than about Judge Kavanaugh. I think this is a blueprint, and you and I and David and others faithful to God may find out one day we're sitting in that very same chair. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, it, it's similar to what I said earlier on in the show, that what we witnessed was the agenda. I mean, right full force in our face. It was Orwellian. It was surreal. You could almost turn it around, even though you know, truth prevailed, a lot of damage has been done. But even though I, I sensed that God was going to supernaturally touch this again, like he has since the Trump-Hillary election and forward, there have been so many victories for America that are just impossible without the hand of God. I, 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 that's what happened here. But even in the midst of the victory, even in the midst of truth finally prevailing, Oh, my gosh, guys, we stared right in the face what the agenda is for this nation if the salt loses its saltiness. Jesus called us salt and light. He says if you turn out the light, if you don't shine the light, darkness will overwhelm. If you don't be the salt, well, what is salt? Well, it adds flavor. It's a preservative. It's also a healing agent. That's how we are to impact our culture. But we can't do it by sitting behind our stained glass windows and listening to some fluffy sermons about you can have your best life now and six ways to get rich if you'll give money to my ministry. No, that's, that's not being the salt. Being the salt is declaring the name of Jesus in our workplace, in our homes, and into the lives of other people, into our families, our children. Being the salt is getting involved. It's voting. It's speaking up in a constitutional republic. Our founding fathers of the church in the first century, they didn't have that. They were under the Roman Empire and emperors that were being worshipped as God and altars set up around the empire for sacrifices to the gods of the Roman Empire and to the god of the Caesar. That's what they were up against. We live in a constitutional republic founded upon the words that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. I mean, we, to, to whom much has been given, much will be required. And Jesus told us, if the salt loses its saltiness, you will be trampled underfoot. And we just stared in the face of exactly, and, by, and, and I'm going to say, we saw what they want and what they will do, mm. but we only saw the tip of the iceberg. Yes. Their plans are to bring all of this down, and Christianity is at the top of the list. Yes, and as Lindsey Graham said, God help us if the Democrats regain power. Um, yeah. I want to ask you about something you put on your Facebook page a couple weeks ago. Um, you said, Dear uh, President Trump, you, have n- you now have a chance to really drain the swamp in light of the sham Kavanaugh hearings. What, what do you mean by that? Yeah. yeah, I put that up there just a couple days ago. Here's what I mean by that. In the light of the FBI report saying we can find no corroboration of Dr. Ford's testimony. I'm going to translate that for you in just a second. And in the light of Miss Rachel Mitchell, the former prosecutor and sex crimes expert who did the questioning during the Senate hearings, the day of, after it was over, she, it was reported by the Washington Post and, C, and uh, USA Today, two very liberal uh, deep state uh, sites. They reported that she said that hearing everything and given all the evidence that was presented, that if she were still a prosecutor, she wouldn't even 
file charges against Brett Kavanaugh. She would not allow this to come to court. Let me interpret what she just said and what the FBI said, and then we'll get to what I said to to, uh, President Trump. Both of them said either she flat lied. I mean, FBI and Ms. Mitchell, that's that's what they're saying. They wouldn't use that word. But either she flat lies, lied, or this happened so long ago, and it was not nearly as big as she's as they're making it out to be. That there is no more evidence. There's nobody that was that saw it that's willing to say they saw it, and it's not what they're presenting it to be. That that's really the only options we're left with, and and so they both. Are saying, and then you had her former boyfriend come forward and say, oh, not only that, she perjured herself. She said she's never helped anybody with a polygraph test. I was there when she did it, and I can tell you who she did it with. The woman wound up working for the FBI. Mm. So what a huge, I mean, you've got witness tampering that was accused right afterwards. That, and no, it was uncovered that she actually tried to get one of her witnesses to change their testimony. That's called witness tampering. That's a felony. So the point of that article I wrote, that open letter to President Trump, was, look, not only did truth prevail, now you have appointed Kavanaugh, now he's been confirmed by the, by the majority of the Senate, but now... Judge Kavanaugh has had seven FBI investigations. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ford has had none. We need to continue the investigation. Somebody, somebody manufactured this and massaged this. Her whole demeanor, her body language, her, her, her vocal intonations changed. She changed into the voice of a little 15 year old teenage girl that whined and whimpered and flipped her hair around and, 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 and shifted around in her chair like she was a child the whole time. This thing was absolutely manufactured, guys. I used to investigate yeah. these kinds of crimes. I know what I'm talking about. Mm. And that's what the prosecutor said. And in a roundabout way, that's what the FBI said. So I've asked Donald Trump, you know, you're there to clean out the swamp. Brother, we just saw a big chunk of the swamp right before us, and we've got them pinned in a corner. So now open up investigations into Dr. Ford's life. Let's go find out. Let's find out who was handling her, who put her up to this, who trained her, who coached her. Let's bring some charges against perjury and witness tampering, not only against her, but against her handlers. And that's how you drain the swamp, guys, and that's the context to what I wrote. Mm. Well, Pastor Carl, we know that if the tables were reversed the democrats would be all over the accuser they would you would find out what they had for breakfast 30 years ago and and who threatening that if they win this midterm that they're going to turn the tables and they're going to reinvestigate and impeach and and uh, just take over the government i mean yes and we've got to play hardball legally of course legally we're different we're legal we're going to do it legal and constitutionally but the tools are there and that's why I wrote that open letter to President Trump and said, please, please, we've got him in a corner. We've got him on the ropes. Knock him out before we lose our nation. Bring some charges. Listen, Leviticus 19, I, I, I don't have it right in front of me, but I, but, and I can, I can paraphrase the quote, but it basically says, God told his children when he brought them into the, into the wilderness and then eventually into the promised land, he told them this as a part of his law. He said, never let it be that only one witness accuses a man, but rather have two or three and let those witnesses agree. In other words, it all has to corroborate. And then he says, but if it turns out that it is a false witness or a false accuser, then let it be done to the accuser what was attempted to be done to the accused. Yep. And then it goes on to say, and in this way you will, you will um, purge the evil from your land mm. so that this will not happen again. And that's what I'm saying to Donald Trump. You must now do to them as they attempted to do to us, yes. and, and, but do it legally, do it through the Word of God principles and our Constitution, but it's, we've got to drain the swamp. If you don't, snakes and alligators cannot be tamed. Mm. 
you mm. have to cage them or destroy them. And I'm not saying kill anybody now. I'm, I'm talking about politically and just get them out of office. But you, that's what you have to do if you're going to drain the swamp. You can't let them just sit there and pretend like we can pet them on the head and they'll be okay. Exactly. Hey, Carl, we've got about six, seven minutes left, and I do want to turn our attention to the Middle East and Israel. You've got a lot of close contacts in Israel. Yes. And interestingly, the Trump administration um, – uh, kind of quietly announced a couple of weeks ago they're working on a Middle East peace plan, and yeah. they would be unveiling it in the next 90 days. Are your contacts in Israel talking to you about this? Are there any concerns that, like the previous presidents, Israel might get cut off at the knees once again? Well, listen, yeah, I, my contacts, in fact, I've got a couple, two contacts that are actually deeply connected to the Israeli government. Uh, so, and I have to be very careful what I say here, but I can just say that th- I don't think they're super concerned that Donald Trump is going to be party to doing anything Israel doesn't want to do or is not willing to do. Now, 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 listen. I'm just answering your question. I'm not telling you how I feel about it yet. Okay, but so, so I don't think there's going to be some massive land for peace deals that's been tried many times, and it does not work. Donald Trump knows this. He has promised to be the best friend Israel's ever had. So far, he has kept that promise. I do not fault him or anybody else for trying to work out any little thing that can be done to ease the tension up, to calm down the fever and the flare-ups and the fire of, of passion. Um, but as far as this massive, uh, any kind of a massive peace deal, you know, the 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 uh, the Arabs, uh, you know, people call them the Palestinians, but that's, you know, the Palestinian Arabs, um, uh, they uh, they've met, let it be known, they want Israel gone, they want to own the land and Jerusalem, they want it all, and that can't happen. So until the Lord Jesus comes, there will be no peace, and we all know that. But you're right. Even the Bible says there are going to be all kinds of attempts at peace. And when they're crying, peace, peace, safety, safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. So my contacts don't have not told me of any specifics of the peace deal, but they are all very uh, positive that Donald Trump is not going to uh, mess them over. I don't know if that helps or not. No, that does. That does. Yeah. Okay, Pastor Carl, we get a lot of comments on our shows, our the people we interview, our guests, and we talk about a lot of them on Fridays. Um, every now and then we get someone who says, hey, all Pastor Carl Gallops does is he's an apologist for, pa- for uh, President Trump. How would you respond to that? Oh, yeah. I wish I had more time than this. No, I would respond. Listen, they're, they're, no, listen. And, I, and I'm not angry at people who say that. The bottom line is, when it came down to it, I did support him. I did support him publicly. I was featured on Fox News as one who was supporting him. I spoke at one of his rallies. I opened his rally in prayer, um, one of his huge rallies. Um, so, so I can see why people would say that. But everybody knows, including the Trump campaign, I do not think Donald Trump is an angel from heaven or the Messiah or our Savior. <laughs> Savior. But it came down to Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I voted for the lesser of two evils, although we always do that, guys. We live in a fallen world. <laughs> we always yeah. vote for the lesser yes. of two evils. But what I'm saying is I was voting for the kind of platform he had. Make America great again, guard our borders, make our military great, guard our economy, uh, make our economy great, guard our heritage, our Judeo-Christian heritage, be proud of it, speak it, live it, and guard the rule of law. Those were his platforms. Hillary Clinton's was more Obama, more Obama, more Obama. It was deep state, and we just saw it in the face in these last couple of weeks. That's why I supported Donald Trump and will continue to as long as he stays on this road. I don't agree with all of his policies. I don't agree with every way that he states his policies. But the bottom line is, it was either make America great again or turn America, turn yourselves over to us, the ruling elite. That's what we escaped. So yes, I will support Donald Trump and anybody that comes after him who's like that just to preserve some semblance of a constitutional republic until the Lord returns. Well said. Hey, Carl, I'm uh, going to tee up one more question that probably deserves a 30-minute answer, and I'm going to give you three minutes to answer (laughs) it. Oh, good. Thank you. No Uh, problem. It's Monday. The Me Too movement. I'm glad women are coming forward and saying no more to sexual harassment. There's no place for that in the church. There's no place for that in a civil society. But to me, this Me Too movement has been weaponized 
by okay. radical liberals. Yes. You've been in law enforcement a long time. Yes. And this women don't lie about these things. Boy, this is dangerous, isn't it? Yes, it's extremely dangerous. Listen, not only was I in law enforcement a long time and saw it from both sides where there were actual victims, and most of the people that come forward are actual victims, but I've also seen, scarily, I have seen false accusations wherein vicious, vicious, nasty, convincing women will come forward. By nasty, I mean their attitude. They will come forward with these horrendous allegations that just, and they will weep and cry and beg and plead. And then in the end of it all, once you bring forth the evidence and put it in their face, the real evidence, they begin to back up and, and snivel and say, well, okay, okay, yeah, I'm, I, I falsely accused him. I just wanted him to do what I wanted him to do. It's a horrible thing. And it's, it's devastating to the person that's been accused falsely. So but here's, here's the point. Here's how ju- jurisprudence does it. Here's how common sense and godliness does it. You always defer to the person who's bringing the accusation, because the vast majority of people who say they have been sexually assaulted have been. You defer. The word defer is different from 100% believe. The word defer means, listen, you give them an ear, you take it seriously, you investigate it as though they are telling the truth. Then the second thing that you do is you presume the innocence of the accused until the evidence is collected to prove that one guilty. That's how we do it in America. The way the Senate, the leftist in the Senate just did it last week or tried to do it was how they do it in China or North Korea or the 57 nations that are Muslim nations. That's what they want for the United States of America. But the way I conducted criminal investigations and the way I conduct my church, listen, as a pastor, I have been involved with law enforcement in uncovering a horrendous sexual molestation case, actually helped depositions, everything else, actually uh, interviewed some of the first victims before the law enforcement did because they didn't even know it, and actually helped and assisted in putting somebody in prison for the rest of their life. So this has not stopped with my law enforcement career. Somehow God continues to use me in these things, which is why after watching the Senate hearings, I was able to write that piece that went viral that said, she's lying. And now it turns out that's, a, that's exactly what it looks like. Mm-hmm. All the evidence points that way. Yeah. But I listened by deferring to her. I thought from the beginning, well, this is pretty serious stuff. I bet they're going to bring some heavy-duty evidence, and it could be that he did this. But as it turns out, apparently the prosecutor wasn't convinced, and neither was the FBI. Oh. Carl Gallups, pastor, best-selling author. Check him out at carlgallups.com. Brother, thank you for your time. We'll talk to you in the month of November. Thank you. God bless you. I look forward to it. You guys are so gracious. Uh, I love the Q90 FM audience, and uh, God bless all of you. Thank you. Same back at you, brother. For thousands of years, mankind has debated how creation began. Ancient texts tell us the story. But today, the real message behind the pivotal account of the Garden of Eden has been obfuscated and lost. That is, until now. World-renowned author Carl Gallops digs up the hidden truths from the book of Genesis to finally give back the knowledge that was lost to the world. Find out what really happened in the Garden of Eden, what Jesus taught about Eden on the cross, and how the conflict between Jesus and the gods of antiquity is about to erupt on planet Earth, fulfilling biblical prophecy. In the new book, Gods of Ground Zero, this explains everything.